Hello. We're going to now look at a design example for a common bass amplifier. I have drawn a common bass amplifier as well as set some of the design specifications um, and transistor parameters. And I'm going to keep it consistent with our common emitter amplifier design just so that you can see the similarities. And so um, similar design specs, a VCC supply of 20 volts, uh, collector current of 0.5 milliamps and um, AC gain of 50 and parameters of beta equal to 100 and the early voltage equal to 100 volts. Uh, first of all, you may notice that I have um, changed a little bit the emitter resistor by adding um, a split resistance, um, RE1 and RE2. And I have done this for the exact same reason I did it in the common emitter amplifier. If I have all my emitter resistance um, set below the capacitor, we have seen that my uh, my voltage gain was equal to RC divided by little r, because the whole of the emitter resistance gets bypassed. Um, in order to be able to control the gain, I am introducing RE1 into my gain equation. And so my new expression for gain in this case will be equal to RC divided by little r plus capital RE1. And I'm going to make a note. Um, here, basically explaining, you know, that splitting my emitter resistance uh, provides more gain stability at the expense of reduced gain. Now, why does it provide more gain stability? Well, uh, that's simple to see in our original expression where we didn't have our E1 um, and all the emitter resistance was just lumped. Our expression for voltage gain was RC divided by little r. Now, remember that little r is equal to the thermal voltage divided by the quiescent collector current. And the thermal voltage is directly dependent on temperature. And so if I have my gain just being dependent on little r, my gain will be dependent on temperature. By adding RE1 and setting, a, setting it up so that it ideally swamps little RE, then I'm making my uh, voltage gain more robust or less dependent on temperature variations. All right, just like with any other circuit, we're going to first do the DC analysis and uh, then the AC analysis. So for the DC portion, um, I'll be setting my Q point. Uh, step number one is always to select a uh, collector current, a quiescent current, if we haven't. In this case, we're going to use 0.5 milliamps. Next, I'm going to select my value of RE, and I'm talking now about uh, DC bias points. So for DC purposes, um, I will consider RE1 and RE2 to be lumped into a single capacitance RE, which is the series combination of the two. And so I'm going to choose RE, which is serious combination of RE1 and RE2, to set the emitter voltage to approximately equal to 1 volt. And the reason for that is um, for temperature stability. And uh, we can see that we have the same DC bias network as we will have for a common emitter amplifier. And so we played this trick for the common emitter amplifier um, and for the 4 resistor voltage divider biasing network. Uh, to set the VE sufficiently large uh, to make the circuit both beta and temperature stable. And so let's do 1 volt. My VE is going to be equal to um, RE times IE. If I want VE to be equal to 1 volt, then my RE is going to be equal to 1 volt divided by 0.5 milliamps or two kilo ohms. So I know my series combination will be two kilo ohms and I'll figure out later how to split that between RE1 and RE2 when I'm setting my gain. Step number three is I'm going to select my um, voltage divider network. So select values of R1 or 2 basically to turn on my transistor. So 
to set the base voltage to VE plus 0.7 volts or 1.7 volts in this case. If I assume I have a perfect voltage divider, meaning uh, no current flowing into the base of the transistor, the ratio of R1 to R2 will be equal to the ratio of the voltage drop across R1 and the voltage drop across R2. I want the voltage drop across R2 to be 1.7 volts, which means I want the voltage drop across R1 to be 20 minus 1.7. So that will be um, 18.3 over 1.7. And there are multiple uh, resistor values that will meet that ratio. But I also want my R2 uh, to be much smaller than the resistance looking into my base. Since I am making the approximation that this is a perfect voltage divider, that implies that R2 is much smaller than the resistance looking into the base of the transistor, and therefore most of the current flows through R2. So I want R2 to be, um, we said, less than or equal to one order of magnitude or one tenth of beta times, uh, well, I'm going to say one tenth of RIB, um, which is approximately equal to beta times RE. So, tenth of beta times RE, um, or 10 RE, which is 20K. So I'm going to, um, if I want R2 to be less than or equal to 20K, I'm going to go ahead and select R2 equals 20K, which gives me an R1 of 220K. And my final step is to um, select the value for RC, and I'm going to select the value so that my output gets centered for maximum output voltage swing. And so I want to center the value of VC with respect to um, the two supplies, or in this case, VCC and ground. And so I'm going to choose RC to center um, output voltage. So in this case, I want VC to be approximately equal to 10 volts. And VC is going to be equal to VCC minus the voltage drop across RC, which is ICRC. So I can solve for RC, which will just be equal to VCC minus VC divided by IC. Or 20 minus 10 divided by 0.5 milli. For RC will be equal to um, 20 kilo ohms. And that's it. This is the, um, the value of my resistors to set up my DC bias point. Next, we're going to look at the AC analysis.